What's Minionese for Welcome to Ms. Mojo? And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Despicable Me franchise moments. Hey, tomato la pita de la poca. Mopa la triba. Findole boss. For this list, we'll be looking at the funniest, most touching, and most delightfully despicable moments from this animated franchise. Focusing on the feature length installments rather than the shorts. Sorry. <laughs> Want a little mama bear on you. You know, I heard a scream and... Yeah, okay, have a good one. Number 10, Intro to Gru, Despicable Me. Despicable Me. Many of the laughs in the first movie stem from how casually despicable felonious Gru is, and his introduction perfectly establishes the film's tone as he goes about his daily business. Gru presents a little boy with a balloon animal just so he can pop it, freezes a long line at a coffee shop so he can cut ahead, and shows no concern for global warming with his choice of vehicle. Oh, and he nonchalantly jokes about disposing of his neighbor's defecating dog. Sorry, you know dogs, they go wherever they want to go. Unless they're dead. <laughs> What's particularly hilarious, though, is how people react to Gru's behavior. They may be intimidated by him, but they're either too afraid to speak up or they just kind of accept that supervillains are members of society in this universe. Law enforcement still has no leads, leaving everyone to wonder which of the world's villains is responsible for this heinous crime. And where will he strike next? Number 9. Gru Meets Drew. Despicable Me 3. I have a brother. At first, Gru is ecstatic to learn that he is a twin brother. It doesn't take long for sibling rivalry to sink in, though. Drew seemingly has the whole package, a giant mansion, a snappy wardrobe, a pig farming business, and his ceiling brings a whole new meaning to the phrase when pigs fly. The one thing that Drew doesn't have that Gru does is the male pattern baldness gene. How is my brother finding a wife like you when he is so bald? <laughs> <laughs> and then as Gru becomes skeptical of his successful brother, Drew goes right ahead and charms Lucy and the children. As bizarre as this introduction is, the scene will resonate with anyone who's ever been envious of a distant relative's wealth, especially if they have a collection of cars and helicopters. All right, let's go home now. Home? Why? I don't know. This guy with the mansion and the cars and all of the hair with the silky smooth, luxurious hair. I feel worse than I did before I came. Number 8. Minions Search for a Boss. Minions. He's an idiot. They're all different, but they all share the same goal. <laughs> to serve the most despicable master they could find. The Minions so stole the show in the first two movies that it only made sense to give them a spin-off prequel of their own. Their origin story isn't as straightforward as you might think, however. Before allying with Gru, they sought out a wide variety of different masters, all of whom met their end thanks to the Minions' incompetence. Finding a boss was easy. But keeping a boss, therein lies the rub. We see them send a T-Rex rolling towards extinction, unwittingly feed a Neanderthal to a hungry bear, and one surprise birthday party results in Dracula biting the dust. These may have all been accidents, but the minions rack up a considerable body count before we're even past the movie's five-minute mark. With minions like these, it's something of a miracle that Gru and his family have survived this long. Ancient Egypt held great promise. But it didn't last long. Number 7. Dance Fight Rematch. Despicable Me 3. I got two words for you. Dance Fight. In another movie, a climactic dance fight might seem a touch strange. In a movie as goofy as Despicable Me 3, though, We'd be surprised if there wasn't a dance fight set to a Madonna song. Gru faces off against his nemesis, Balthazar Brat, a child star turned man-child who's eternally stuck in the 80s. Brat has some slick moves on his side, and an even slicker head of hair, but Gru manages to snatch his keytar to deliver the final blow. Game over! <laughs> Is this what you're looking for? No! Gru sends the villain flying off the roof into a wad of bubblegum and ascending towards an onions billboard. Curse you, Gru! Is that another spin-off in the making? With Brat defeated, 
Gru's family shares a heartfelt embrace until the minions burst their bubble. <gasps> Number 6. Super Silly Funland – Despicable Me Night bulb. Now that they've served their purpose, Gru plans to ditch his three newly adopted daughters at an amusement park. Well, at least he's abandoning them somewhere fun. This proves easier said than done, though, as Gru just can't seem to shake his parental duties. Roller coaster sickness aside, Gru slowly but surely finds himself warming to the girls. Even somebody as cold-hearted as he is has a hard time resisting Agnes when she spots a unicorn doll. He's so fluffy, I'm gonna die! And when the store holder doesn't play fair, Gru doesn't hesitate to break out his laser gun to win the prize. Sure, he committed some pretty violent vandalism, but it was worth it to see Agnes hug her fluffy new friend. He's so fluffy! Number 5. Minions Go Shopping – Despicable Me Hey! Oops. When Agnes's first unicorn toy gets disintegrated, Gru tasks the minions with tracking down a new one. Thankfully, it's not like they could possibly get into any shenanigans at a run of the mill supermarket. Just kidding, chaos totally ensues. <laughs> and parking in a disabled spot isn't even the tip of the iceberg. As if the minions' disguises weren't already enough to raise a few flags, they draw more attention to themselves by shaking up a soda bottle and partaking in a little karaoke. It was perhaps at this precise moment that it suddenly became clear the Minions would be this franchise's breakout stars. The trip wasn't for nothing either, as Tim, Mark, and Phil return with a new unicorn. Well, of sorts. It's beautiful. What else can you say except Papoy? Number 4. Gru's Bad Date – Despicable Me 2 I know you're in there, Gru! There's no way you're getting out of this! Unable to escape his nosy neighbor, Gru is forced into a date with the obnoxious Shannon. And it turns especially toxic when Shannon tries yanking off Gru's toupee. Not a good move. <gasps> Fortunately, Lucy shows up packing a moose tranquilizer dart. And with his date down for the count, Gru's night turns into weekend at Bernie's as they escort Shannon's unconscious body home. Along the way, Shannon's head gets stuck in a door, her face is bashed into a lamppost, and her body is sent flying off a car roof. Well, I think you did it. You just officially had the worst date ever. As hilarious as the slapstick is, though, it's also an oddly romantic scene, as Lucy turns Gru's worst date ever into a pretty fun one. Oh, and uh, just between you and me, you look much better bald. Number 3. Gru Saves Lucy – Despicable Me Too don't worry about me, Gru. I'll be fine. I have survived lots worse than this. Okay, that's not entirely true. I'm actually kind of freaking out up here. Eduardo El Macho Perez certainly has a macho backstory, complete with a shark, some dynamite, and a volcano. But then he tries to recreate his fake demise towards the end of Despicable Me 2 by strapping Lucy to a rocket. Yay! The villain attempts to subdue Gru by mutating himself into a purple beast, but it's nothing that a freeze ray, lipstick taser, and fart gun can't solve. El Macho still has a chicken in his nest, however, to send Gru and Lucy skyrocketing towards doom. Fortunately, while the shark is turned into sushi, Gru and Lucy find the time to declare their affection for each other before diving into the water. If I'd asked you out on the day, what would you have said? Are you kidding me? Yes! <laughs> narrowly escaping an explosive demise. Climaxes don't get more over the top than this. They'll be back. Number 2. Taking the Kids Home – Despicable Me
From the moment Gru adopts Margot, Edith, and Agnes, it's clear that this isn't going to be anything like Annie. While Miss Hattie and Agnes fall for Gru's dentist facade, Margot and Edith can immediately tell something is off about their new father. Instead of a house made of gummy bears, Gru's lair is filled with some seriously dangerous objects, including an Iron Maiden. No, no! Stay away from there, it's fragile! Which leads to what's probably the franchise's darkest joke, as Edith is seemingly impaled. While her blood turns out to be just a juice box, Gru's reaction shows that, at this early stage, he merely views the girls as pawns in his scheme. And when he attempts to lay down a few ground rules, Agnes's adorably annoying noises push him close to the edge. Does this count as annoying? Very. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I get you already. continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Moon Heist – Despicable Me Oh! oh I've got it! I've got the moon! At long last, Gru has the shrunken moon in the palm of his hands. The heist of the century feels emptier than space, though, without the girls. Realizing that his daughters mean more to him than the moon itself, Gru rushes back to Earth for their ballet recital. His problems soon grow bigger, though, as the shrink ray's effects wear off and the girls get kidnapped by Vector. <gasps> Did you see that? With his parental instincts finally kicking in, Gru dodges missiles and punches a shark to rescue them. The situation continues to escalate as a spaceship chase ensues with the moon gradually returning to its normal size, until Gru finally proves his deviation as a father. As for Vector, well, he gets the moon to himself. Oh, poop. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. This list is so fluffy, I'm gonna die!